Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly his salvation is very near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. Today, we remember Frederick Douglass, prophetic witness. Born as a slave in 1818, Frederick Douglass was separated from his mother at the age of eight and given by his new owner, Thomas Ald, to his brother and sister-in-law, Hugh and Sophia Ald. Sophia attempted to teach Frederick to read along with her son, but her husband put a stop to this, claiming it would forever unfit him to be a slave. Frederick learned to read in secret earning small amounts of money when he could, and paying neighbors to teach him. In 1838, Frederick Bailey, as he was then known, escaped and changed his name to Frederick Douglass. At the age of 14, he had experienced a conversion to Christ in the African Methodist Episcopal Church, and his recollection of that tradition's spiritual music sustained him in his struggle for freedom. Those songs still follow me to deepen my hatred of slavery and quicken my sympathies for my brethren in bonds. An outstanding orator, Douglas was sent on speaking tours in the northern states by the American Anti-Slavery Society. The more renowned he became, the more he had to worry about recapture. In 1845, he went to England on a speaking tour. His friends in America raised enough money to buy out his master's legal claim to him so that he could return to the United States in safety. Douglas eventually moved to New York and edited the pro-abolition journal North Star, named for the Fleeing Slaves' Nighttime Guide. Douglas was highly critical of churches that did not dissociate themselves from slavery. Challenging those churches, he quoted Jesus' denunciation of the Pharisees. They bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. From Matthew a strong advocate of racial integration, Douglas disavowed black separatism and wanted to be counted as equal among his white peers. When he met Abraham Lincoln in the White House, he noted that the president treated him as a kindred spirit without one trace of condescension. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose truth makes us free. We bless your name for the witness of Frederick Douglass, whose impassioned and reasonable speech moved the hearts of a president and a people to a deeper obedience to Christ. Strengthen us also to be outspoken on behalf of those in captivity and tribulation, continuing in the word of Jesus Christ, our liberator who with you and the Holy Spirit dwells in glory everlasting. Amen.